This Eliza tutorial series is kindly sponsored by CalBiotech. Please click the link below or in the video description to see what Eliza kits they have to offer. Hello everyone, my name is Yusuf Farhat and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the concept behind ELISA. Um, ELISAs are a very common laboratory technique and it's going to be helpful to know how it works for a number of reasons, whether it's a class you're taking or a procedure that you're trying to master. Um, so basically what we're going to start out with is looking at some of these samples that we've got here. Um, I've got a number of media samples and if we were to zoom in on them, we would see that there's a mixture of proteins inside of each of these tubes. And each different type of protein is represented by a different color and different shape of the squiggly line here. And so basically, what I want to do is measure the concentration of a particular protein. So in this case, I want to know how much of the green protein I have in each of these tubes. And so basically, I want some way to measure that so I can graph it for each of my samples. Um, ELISAs are really a, a powerful way of doing that. So in order to understand how the ELISA works, we have to know what an antibody is and the basic way that an antibody works. And so basically, antibodies are proteins that the immune system makes. And what's special about an antibody are they have these really sticky regions that stick specifically, meaning that they only can stick to certain things or only certain shapes. And so basically, um, these, these things which normally stick to viruses and bacteria and that sort, um, we can get them so that they stick to our protein of interest. So when our protein of interest comes into proximity of the antibody, it sticks irreversibly. And the other proteins, like the black and the red and the blue one, because they have a different shape, they don't stick to this particular antibody. They might stick to a different one, but this one only sticks to the green protein. So we're going to use this antibody, or one like it, to detect how much of our green protein there is in these samples. And so in order to do an ELISA, the thing we really have to start with is something called an ELISA plate. And an ELISA plate is basically a 96-well plate that has a special surface which binds protein really really strongly and so basically if we take our proteins from our sample and we put it into one of the wells of this plate then what will happen is over time the proteins will sort of settle and stick to the the surface of each well of that plate okay so the proteins stick to the surfaces and then what we can do is we can add one of these antibodies and we, we're going to call it a detection antibody because what it has is this little green thing representing an enzyme that we can stick to these antibodies. And the enzyme can produce a color change, which allows us to measure how much of our, of our sample there is. So I'll illustrate that in the next couple of slides. So basically what we do is we add our detection antibody after the, the proteins have stuck to the, the surface of each well. We add the detection antibody, and over time, our antibody will stick specifically, that means only to our protein of interest. And then after we wash away the extra um, un unbound detection antibody, what we can do is add a certain chemical which is clear, and, but when it reacts with the special enzyme stuck to the detection antibody, it changes to a blue color. And then if we add some acid, the blue color changes to a yellow. And in the end, by measuring how much yellow color we have, we can then determine how much protein there was to begin with. So there's a direct correlation between the amount of yellow color um, that is produced and the amount of our original um, uh, protein of interest in the sample. So this technique is called a direct ELISA, and the word direct refers to the fact that the detection antibody sticks directly to the protein of interest. So the next thing we want to look at is what's an indirect ELISA? And an indirect ELISA basically works the same way, so we just have to back up a couple steps to when we stuck our proteins to the, the ELISA plate. And so basically the indirect ELISA makes use of two antibodies instead of one. The first is the primary detection antibody, and that antibody is, is just like in the last slide, 
with the direct ELISA, it sticks directly to the protein of interest, okay? But there's no enzyme stuck to it. Now, what we have to do then is introduce a second antibody called the secondary detection antibody. And that antibody will stick to the first antibody. It doesn't stick to anything else. So basically, this gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of choosing antibodies that we can use to detect different proteins. So there are some advantages to using two antibodies instead of one, uh, which I'm not going to go into right now. But the basic idea is that we had to use two antibodies. And so the eventual chemical reaction and the enzyme that changes the color from clear to blue uh, and then eventually with acid to yellow, all that is happening um, farther away from our protein of interest. But this, the idea is the same in that the amount of yellow is still correlating directly with the amount of our original protein. And so the term indirect for indirect ELISA comes from the fact that the secondary detection antibody is sticking indirectly to the protein of interest as opposed to sticking directly to it. So one thing that I didn't mention is that there's a lot of empty space between the protein, as you can see here. So one thing that will happen is if we don't somehow cover up that empty space, our detection antibodies will stick to those empty spaces and give us a false measurement, meaning that we think that there's protein there when it's really just empty space. So the step that I didn't mention in order to avoid confusion before um, is basically called a blocking step where you add a little bit of a reagent. Um, usually it's just a protein like bovine serum albumin, um, which is not the protein of interest for your study. Um, so you just add some of that extra protein in and it covers up all the empty space. And then from that point forward, you can continue with the ELISA as I told you before. Um, and so we're going to show you how to do all those steps in some of the videos that are going to come out shortly. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is something called the sandwich ELISA, and that's actually what the video series is going to be covering. Um, so what exactly is a sandwich ELISA? Well, basically the concepts are all the same. The only difference is before we add our sample, we first add something called the capture antibody. And the capture antibody is the same as before. It just sticks specifically to our protein of interest. Now, the reason we add the capture antibody first is because we want it to be the only thing that sticks to the ELISA plate, OK? And so after the capture antibody sticks, we're going to wash away all the excess. And then we're going to block the surface just like before. OK, now the reason that this is powerful is because now we can add in our sample and just our protein of interest is going to stick to that capture antibody. So all the other proteins are just going to wash away. And this gives us a lot more sensitivity because now we can really capture all of the protein of interest in our sample. So we're going to get a lot more sensitivity with this technique. From this point forward, everything's pretty much the same as the direct and the indirect ELISA in that you just add some detection antibodies and the color change is produced. And that correlates with the original amount of protein in the sample. So again, the only difference between the sandwich ELISA is that we started with coding a capture antibody. And so the protein of interest really gets sandwiched between these two proteins, which is why it's called the sandwich ELISA. So I hope that can clarify um, how these different ELISAs work and um, stay tuned because we're going to be discussing how to actually perform one of these ELISAs in the next few videos. Thanks for watching.